Oh, god damn. I'm gonna taste. You guys are so lucky to have me. This is so good. Guys, we're back with another episode of Mark's Easy Eats. Tonight, we've got an absolute family favorite. I'm gonna talk you through how to make a Mongolian lamb. Now, this recipe, you ask your Chinese friends, or anyone's Chinese, they don't even have Mongolian lamb in China. But, but here in Australia, and I've heard in America as well, it's one of those takeout sort of recipes, one of those takeout meals that you pick up, and they are so delicious. For me, it's a family favorite any night of the week. Let's talk you through it. First, we start with some of our ingredients. Now, we'll go from left to right. We've got some of the oils here. We've got some sesame oil, which is very, very strong in a good way. And we've got veggie oils, we've got some hoisin sauce. Now, in terms of soy sauce, there's light soy sauce and there's dark soy sauce. Both very important. One's gonna add a lot of flavor. One especially is gonna add some color to make everything look a bit, a little bit sexy. And then you've also got some, you know, they call it rice wine, Chinese Shaoxing wine. Some shit like that. And you know what? You need it, it takes it to the next level. This is my little secret recipe. Well, I haven't made it. I've just claimed it as mine because no one else has heard of it from who I know. But it's so damn good. Garlic chili infusion, can't go wrong. Chinese five spice, bicarb soda. We're gonna use that to tenderize the meat. We're gonna make this meat nice and juicy like when it comes to the shops. And it's really soft and tender. Also got some corn flour to thicken up some sauce. Now in terms of veggies, guys, People can mix and match with anything. People can say, oh, you can't use this and you can't use bell peppers or capsicum as we call them here and whatever recipe. Who gives a shit? Add whatever you like. Whatever you got in the kitchen, whack it straight in. Today I'm gonna go with some broccoli. We've got some garlic. We've got some ginger. We've got shallots, spring onions. And as I mentioned, the red capsicums and the main event here is the lamb. Now with this lamb, you don't wanna just use any lamb. I mean, you can use any lamb, but we're using what they call backstrap lamb. And the reason is it's the most the most premium one, guys, cuts easy, becomes easy to marinate. Half an hour, minimum two hours is a sweet spot. Now we've got the meat here, guys. All you wanna do is cut them up into bite-sized pieces. But you also wanna make sure you get rid of all these like veiny fat so it's not too disgusting when you're cooking it. So chop those little bits right off, make it nice and ready to be eaten. All right, so what we've done now is we've cut off all the fat as much as we can. Now, guys, it's a bit of a rough job. Yes, I know there's wastage. You have to come in and tell me. I know there's wastage. There's probably a lot of wastage. But the idea is, like I said, we're not here for MasterChef. Do your best. You cut off a bit extra. It's fine. We'll survive. As you can see, the grain here is going this way. We want to cut against it like this. We want to have bite-sized pieces. Now, we want to have them in the sense that I reckon aim for half to a centimeter wide. Now, try and get them as even as possible. Just so it comes to cooking times, it can be. They can cook nice and evenly. Sharp knife goes a long way. Righto, now our meat's cut up, we need to do a marinade. Let's put this aside, get a marinade happening. So now that the lamb's cut up, guys, let's start marinating this bad boy. So they chuck everything into a bowl. It doesn't have to be so massive like this one. Like I said to you before, that bicarb soda is gonna tenderize all the meat, make it nice and soft. About a teaspoon, about a teaspoon of that just to get it in there. About a tablespoon of corn flour. Now corn flour is here for two reasons. One, it's gonna make this a bit crispy, which is what we want. Also, gonna thicken up the sauce. We're also gonna put some more in the sauce, so keep that aside, we're still gonna need some more later. Now, while we've done that, we're gonna add some Shaozing wine that I've mentioned before. Again, flavor-wise, oh, delicious. Now, that's meant to be about, about two tablespoons, solid two tablespoons in there. This ratio that I'm making right now is there for about 600 grams of your lamb. So if you're making half of that, add half of these amount. Now I'm also gonna add a similar amount. This is the light soy sauce. Ooh, let's open this one. Preparation is key. Done. It's about a tablespoon in there. It's some nice strong flavors. And once we've done that guys, we mix. Now, obviously wash your hands first like I've done. Now there is one more thing I'm gonna to add to this guys and just to help bind it up just that little bit. Now some people do it, some people don't. I'm gonna add an egg white. Now what we're gonna do is get rid of that yellow, the yolk, oh, should be putting that in there actually. <laughs> Done. Now what I found is when you do it this way, it just helps it bind that little bit better. Now give it a mix. 
Now once it's fully incorporated, glad dry that up, chuck it in the fridge, minimum, minimum half an hour. I reckon two hours is a sweet spot. All right, after that, I promise it's gonna be nice and soft. My goodness, if you could smell that. <sighs> Try it at home, smell it, let me know in the comments how good it smells. All right, while that's in there marinating, what we're gonna do now is our sauce. Now, a few different ingredients, like I said, nothing different. There is one I didn't mention before, I completely forgot about it. Now, this is my secret weapon. Dark brown sugar, all right? It's gonna change this whole thing. Now, let's get started. First things first, we're gonna start with our superior dark soy sauce. This is the one that I love to use. It's infused with mushroom. I've been finding this is incredible. We want approximately two tablespoons worth. Next up, the light soy sauce, which we've used before. Now, with this one, what we want to be doing is about half the amount of the dark one that we've used. Let's get in there. Now, you'll notice we're not going to use any salt here, guys. And the reason behind that is soy sauce is extra salty. Now, with this, about half a teaspoon. Make it even one full teaspoon. This is Chinese five spice. The flavors here are just ridiculous. Next, we've got our hoisin sauce. This is the same as barbecue sauce, but a Chinese barbecue sauce. So it's definitely got a bit of sweetness to it. Still got a bit of saltiness to it. Now, we wanna add approximately about four tablespoons worth of this. There's gonna be a fair bit of this, so this is gonna be the basis of our flavor. Get that right in there. This is a new bottle, guys, first time to be used. So, it's trying me a little bit, but we got there in the end, done. Also, we wanna use this, it's a chili garlic paste. ABC is the brand I use, and I've been finding that it is fantastic. Now, it is pretty damn hot, so you wanna be pretty careful of how much you put. Now, people in this room watching me right now, they're already giving me like, you know, scared eyes. All right, we're all gonna be good, we'll survive. All right, so that's that. Second to last, the rice wine. You wanna chuck some of that in there. Get a bit of flavor, and it's very hard to say no to wine, so. You know, we like it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, most ingredients are in there. Let's finish off. We're gonna use this dark brown sugar. You can use normal sugar. People do use normal sugar, but I found when I use this dark brown sugar, my goodness, just takes it to this next level, this dark, dark sweetness, sort of like a Coca-Cola flavor. Put about a teaspoon or so of that in there. You won't regret it. Now, once that's all in there, add about a cup of water to it or just under. And that, my friends, the sauce is done. Get in there, mix it all up. Mix it up nice and well. I did forget to mention one thing, corn flour. I spoke about it, I never did it. We're talking about a tablespoon or so. Not too much, but enough in there, because what you want to do is make sure that this sauce gets nice and thick. Comes really nice and glossy at the end. Now, sometimes it is hard to give it a good mix. So you might want to push your spoon on the edges of the cup, whichever device you're using to, to mix, and make sure it gets nice and dissolved. Messy AF, that's just my style, we're there. Alrighty, we've done our sauce, put it aside. Now what we need to do is cut up these veggies. I'm not gonna boil how to cut up veggies, A, because I suck at cutting veggies. We can cut it, or we will cut it but find much better videos out there to learn from it. That's all you need to do. Otherwise, let's skip to the final result of these cut up veggies. Righto, everything's chopped up. The shallots, we use two to three. We just wanna make it such that they're roughly chopped. There's no perfection with them. Now in terms of the broccoli, get those little flower bits at the top. You can throw a few stems in there if you want. Now you wanna separate the spring onions between the greener parts and the wider parts. Keep them separated. This is more of a garnish for the end, guys. This is the other part of the spring onions. We're gonna make sure they look like this. Get the white side there. In here, we've got our garlic, we've got our chili, and we've got the ginger. Capsicums, everything's ready. The more prepared you are before everything goes in, the better. Next step is we have to make the noodles. Now the idea is with this, you don't wanna overcook them. What I like to do, put them in the boiling water, leave them for the two minutes, take it out, put it through one of these, uh, devices, get the water out, and then put it through an ice bath. All right, so now we want to strain those noodles. Put it in the sink. 
Careful, because it's gonna be hot. Now, once we've done that, we wanna be quick, get this straight into an ice bath, as we've got prepared here, guys. Now, inside this bowl, it's literally just water and ice. Have a quick look. And again, the idea behind this is that we want these noodles to stop cooking so they're not overcooked. All right, once that's done, put it aside. All we're gonna do now is cook it up and get ready to eat. This is gonna be great. All right, guys, so the, this thing is piping hot. I've heated it up for about five minutes first, and the idea is you wanna flash fire everything. You wanna make sure it's ready to go, and that thing is, is steaming hot. Let's get in there. What we're gonna use is, as discussed before, we're gonna use our peanut oil. Get a little bit in there. Let's get it heated up. First things first, we're gonna cook our meat. Now the idea is, we don't wanna cook it all at once, so the, what we're gonna try and do is cook it in batches. And the reason is, if you put too much in at once, it's gonna lower that temperature of the wok. And if you lower the temperature of the wok too much, you won't hit, you're not gonna get a, that crispy egg shell, that, that crispy shell we want on the outside. So let's get that first batch in there. Try and separate as much as possible. Remember guys, when it's super hot, we want to become, we want to have it crispy. Crispy lamb, my God, sounds so delicious. All right, that's all brown, that's ready to go. Let's get that out. Mm -mm. That's gonna be so good. All right, and that's there. Lamb is done, put it aside, and let's move on to the next, okay? Now we're gonna get your first things, your onions. Now guys, we're only mixing this so quickly. See the mixing of the tossing, this cooks so quick. This pan is so bloody hot. Everything's gonna flash right. And what I've got in first there is your shallots. The flavor on these guys, and I'm using this better than brown or red onions, which you can use, you can use. I just find that these are just oh, so delicious. So delicious. Give these a mix. Now we've got the garlic in there, we've got the ginger in there. We've got the chili in there. Oh, the aroma like it's mine now, I wish I could describe it to you. My goodness. Delicious. Get that right around. Now, once it starts to change that color and everything started to become a bit more brown, now remember, you want to be mixing continuously because you don't want to burn. Now, as you notice, it's getting that bit cooked. Next up, we chuck in the capsicums. These take a while to cook, so we can throw them in early. Now yeah, once that's in there, we're gonna chuck in the shallots. Shallots, we're gonna chuck in the spring onions. We're gonna chuck in the whites of them though. Once your aromatics are in there, about another 30 seconds or so from when we started. The broccoli's a quick cooker. up. We don't wanna be too late. We'll get in there now. Give it just a chance to soften up. Think of me when you're feeding your dates. Or maybe after you finish feeding your dates. <laughs> All right, now that the broccoli's in there, we started softening them up. Everything's coming together beautifully. Now, we're gonna introduce that meat. As that's in there, remember that beautiful sauce we made earlier? Give it another stir just in case it's uh, hardened up a little bit. You got a whisk, do that. If not, now chuck that straight in there. Oh yeah. Hey guys, this sauce is gonna thicken up and it's gonna glaze everything. Oh, I'm getting so excited thinking about the colors in this. Oh yeah, how's that? Now everything's in here, having a hot bath. Give it a minute or two to sizzle. Get it nicely relaxed, take it easy. Picking up. Let that cornstarch do its work. Let it go all over that, let it coat it. All right, guys, that's just about done. So what we're gonna do is now come off the fire, number one. Number two, let's get these beautiful, beautiful spring onions in there, that nice glaze. Now, as I've said before, this dish, oh, fuck my head. <laughs> as I've said this before, this dish can be served either on rice 
It can be served with noodles. Tonight we've opted to go with noodles. So what I'm gonna do is, just because I can, I'm gonna chuck in these noodles. And the reason I'm doing that is I want these noodles to become absorbed with this, suck up some of that sauce, get some delicious color, and go in as one dish. Now again, might not be the most traditional way. I've seen a lot of it, a lot of time it's been done with rice. In terms of I do enjoy it with rice, but tonight we thought we'd try something different for this video. Oh my goodness. Gracious me. Sort of like a chow mein from Mongolian lamb chow mein. Once again, this is not the traditional way, but this is my way. Try it out, let me know how you go. All right, all right, all right. Now that is freaking delicious. Let me get one of these heat mats. This wok is bloody heavy. Have a look at this, guys. Let's plate her up. Now again, you've got a generous serving of noodles here and the lamb. Yes, it's a bit messy, because it it's a bit saucy, but that's not a bad thing. The saucier, the sexier. Let's garnish that with some sesame. Have a look. This is my twist on a Mongolian lamb dish. You can make it with noodles, make it with rice. Once you have it, let me know in the comments how you went. Anyone can be a chef. If I can do it, I promise, I promise you can. Follow my steps, be as messy as you want. Who cares, clean it up after. Bit of fun, delicious food that anyone can make. I hope you enjoyed it guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Feel free to subscribe.